Hey, Phantom Maniacs, welcome to the newest spooky toy review here on the Needless Things podcast channel. Today, we are taking a look at Dr. Philip K. Decker from the Clive Barker film Nightbreed. He is not the hero of the movie, as you might be able to guess, looking at his hideous and terrifying mask. He is the villain of the movie, but... He is just a human, proving once again that we are the real monsters. This is a release from NECA in what they refer to as their 8-inch clothed action figure line. I always have trouble deciding how to refer to these because obviously NECA doesn't want to call them Mego style, even though that's what they are. It's one of my favorite action figure lines, and this is the first time I will be unboxing one for review uh, on, ne on Needless Things, and specifically here on the Needless Things YouTube channel. Please like, subscribe, and share. Come meet the dead of night. Uh, and then on the back, we've got a couple of cool product shots with the important reveal. Now, usually I like pictures that are actually of whatever the figure is supposed to be, like pictures of David Cronenberg in the mask would be cool, uh, which a little bit of trivia there if you didn't know. David Cronenberg played Philip K. Decker in the movie. Uh, but in this instance, I think it's important that we see that that briefcase opens up and holds all of his uh, instruments of plunder. So very cool feature right there. You've got the zipper design right here. Great, great card back. I really like it. Uh, and then at the top, we've got a little bit of bio Nightbreed. After a psychiatrist, this guy, convinces Aaron that he's guilty of vicious murders, the troubled young man is driven to find the city he sees in his nightmares, believing that he belongs there. Because Midian is where the monsters live. Or is it? Uh, Midian certainly is where some of the monsters died. Uh, so, NECA, with a lot of these releases has this plastic clamshell on here that doesn't just open up. You can see that uh, that's all heat sealed together. Ooh, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. I need to be more careful because this plastic will slice you right open. Uh, so anyway, this is considered to be resealable packaging, even though you have these right here keeping it from just popping right open which I guess I could just tear them open. I've never done that before. I actually have a mint-on-card collection of these figures because I like the card art typically is so fantastic. But I have to open this guy up. I, I'm such a big fan of this character and of this movie that I really need to have him on the shelf. So what we have to do here is take some scissors that I have no clever name for whatsoever and just cut underneath that dotted line which I, I guess technically you're supposed to cut on the dotted line. But uh, I am not a fan of this packaging. As good as it looks hanging on the wall, I just don't care for it. I understand they don't want to just do a card back with a blister on it because that's going to get bunged up at retail and it's not going to look good at all. But I just, I don't know. I'm just not a fan of the, the package style here. I like it better when these come in the little boxes. Although, if you are a mint-on-card collector, those little boxes are cumbersome and bulky and, and certainly don't look as good hanging on the wall. So now, uh, we've got all the uh, heat-sealed stuff removed. So we can take this on the side here and just pop that right open. So you can see that it's technically resealable packaging. I'm going to pull that card back out. Look at that gorgeous art. Uh, I'm such a fan of the way that NECA chooses artists to do the work for these. You've got all the main characters of the movie over here, which, man, I would love to see these in action figure form. I don't know that I buy it'll happen, because particularly with these 8-inch cloth retro figures, uh, a lot of times they'll sort of hit one character and move on. Although, as we'll see later in the month, if you stay tuned to the Needless Things YouTube channel, there are some occasions where they will make more than just one character from a movie. Hmm, what could I be talking about there? Uh, and then back here, we have the credits, which is wonderful. NECA is so great for crediting the creators that do all this, including uh, Chris Ramo for the packaging. So that's wonderful. I'm not going to throw this out. I love this piece right here. 
Now it's time to take a look at this figure. Let's get this shiny, glaring plastic off the screen. I don't want to hurt your eyes, my dear viewers. We got all the accessories out of here. Got that briefcase that we mentioned before. I've got a nice piece of plastic holding all of the different bladed weapons in place right there. A little piece of tape. I always love it, and NECA tends to do this now, where there's a piece of plastic on top of the accessories rather than them being in direct contact with tape. I'm not a big fan of any accessories being just taped up because it can pull paint off or it can, at, at the least, it leaves stickiness on them, and I hate that. Uh, all right, all of our weapons are out. Now let's take Decker out of there by using our trusty Dollar Tree fingernail clippers to pull that little tab up there and just snip right through that plastic. In my opinion, the easiest way to deal with twist ties and all the uh, ways that figures get affixed into their packaging, next time you're at Dollar Tree, just grab a pair of these and keep them in your toy opening zone. Is that it? He's still in there. He doesn't want to come out. He's shy. Oh, maybe that's why he wears a mask. All right, so let's take a look at this figure. Uh, this is a gruesome mask. It's one of my favorites as far as like sort of serial killer style masks go. Uh, now these figures are a little different. This is not a NECA ultimate action figure. So look at this double breasted suit on this guy. This is great. I'll be very excited when this goes away. Uh, but you know, you don't have the same range of motion with these as you do with one of the ultimate action figures and that's okay you can actually see uh, the hair of the character under the laces of the mask designed very much like a wrestling mask which is a detail i don't know that i'd noticed before really I, if if i'd had to guess i would have said there was a zipper back there um and and i'm sure it shows it in the movie i just it's one of those things where you, you just don't look that closely and how gross is this this lip just visible through that zipper right there those button eyes uh, just a fantastic, creepy design uh, for a killer's mask. Uh, the suit itself, and again, the articulation on these is a little different. We, we're not going to have double-jointed elbows. Uh, we do have a bicep swivel, and we do have a swivel and a pivot at the shoulder. Uh, but you're not going to get a ton of use out of this, because this also is not a 112 collective figure, because it's certainly not anywhere near that price point. A little adjustment is probably going to be necessary on the suit before I... He's actually got little shoulder pads in his suit. That's incredible. Uh, a little adjustment of the fabric of the suit is probably going to be necessary before I put him on the shelf, but that's okay. I have no problem with that. Uh, overall, we've got a great-looking suited character. The tie, this is something NECA has not figured out yet on these figures because I have... Uh, you can see the Velcro on the shirt right there, but the tie doesn't quite reach over under the collar. Uh, I don't know the best way for them to do ties like this. Uh, it's an interesting problem to have because you can't just have a big giant piece of fabric going under the collar because then the collar's not going to sit right. Uh, I have, I think it's a leather face where there's a big piece of elastic sticking out right here, and that doesn't look great. Uh, it's an ongoing issue that I'm sure NECA will figure out at some point, but for now, we've just got uh, you know a number of figures with ties that don't look super. I will say the suit, you may look at it and think it looks a little bulky, but you got to remember this movie came out in 90, oh gosh, 91 or 92. I can't remember off the top of my head. This, this is what suits looked like back then. There were no slim cut suits. This sort of uh, boxy look is exactly right. Uh, and again, articulation-wise, you've just got the knee bend. Uh, and then down here, you know, no socks or anything on this guy. Again, this is not a 112 collective figure, uh, just a, a simple hinged ankle. And that's fine with me because what these are meant to be are basically updates of Mego figures. And granted, there are Mego figures on the market now, but they, they hit a different type of nostalgia and are not as high quality, although they are fantastic, and I might end up opening one uh, here on the Needless Things YouTube channel if I if I can actually find one of the new releases. Uh, but these are a different level. So for the price point, this is a fantastic toy. Look at his uh, sort of chainmail-looking glove there. 
all that sculpted detail, that nice metallic paint going on. Almost almost a little Michael Jackson looking. Hee hee. Very cool. Very well done. And uh, what have we got going on right here? A little closure where the glove goes on. Just looks great. Attention to details, fantastic. And like I said, this is a different type of nostalgia that these figures are going for, and, and I love it. Now, let's take a look at his accessories. First of all, we've got that briefcase that I mentioned before. Let's see how difficult this is going to be to open up. Is there a code? Do I need a code? Oh, there we go. So that opens right up, and I love this. They've actually got the little... Uh, spots where different files and folders would go up here. But then in the bottom, nothing but death. Spots for those bladed weapons. I uh, love it. It's great. Now let's take a look at those weapons before we put them in there. We've got this one, which is far too long to fit in the briefcase. Uh, just a long... It's a sword. This has gone beyond the designation of knife. And this is just straight up a sword. Let's see how well it fits into the figure's hand. Perfectly. Absolutely perfect fit into that hand. Ugh, that is that is so creepy. Look at that guy. Absolutely horrifying. I love it. Uh, and then we've got sort of a basic hunting knife type design. And you can see there's paint uh, on the blade and on the hilt. Very well done. I like it. A machete. Gotta have a machete in there. Uh, just a, a staple of horror. And you can see where the steel actually does go all the way down, and these are just uh, attached on the outside of the single steel piece, like an actual machete. Machete! Very nice. There's somebody who needs one of these figures. Uh, Danny Trejo is machete. Uh, and then a more straightforward stabby knife, a, a dagger almost. And then finally, uh, maybe my favorite, just a straight razor, not even a folding straight razor, just a, a straight up straight razor. Now, you know what I really like about these, though, is that they all slot right into place here. But they all match. They all have that white handle. How cool is that? Just a matching set of Instruments of Destruction. Let me close that up. And he's good to go. That machete. machete. I know where to put that. Because I'm probably putting him on the shelf. Let's get that briefcase in hand. Just ready for a day at the office. The murder office. This guy is fantastic. He's still available. Uh, he's been out for a little while, but you can find him now at your major retailers. I think he's awesome. If you're a fan of Nightbreed, especially, I mean, if you're a fan of Clive Barker, wouldn't you want to have an action figure uh, representing one of his best-known characters, one of his creepiest characters, really? Again, illustrating that we are the monsters. You guys... Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, and uh, come back next week for more spooky toy reviews.